guys, welcome back ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for us to the channel. My name is Martin Togger, obviously, as you know, because you picked this video. And I'd like to give you a little review on, uh, on the Lerm, uh, on a lovely tank. Because this is one of the best sniping heavies in uh, the game. And before people will start writing hate comments and messages, telling me, but Martin, you're doing this wrong, you're telling people to, to snipe in a heavy, why are you doing that, why are you doing that? Well, this is, this is, or this has, one of the best guns you can get on a heavy tank, in my opinion. And that's because it is a really balanced gun. It doesn't have the big oomph of the VK100 OMB. It doesn't have that really high rate of fire that the Carnarvon Action 10 gets. It doesn't have the monstrous penetration on AP that the T34 uh, gets in the M6A2 E1X get. But it has brilliant dispersion. I mean, the Carnarvon Action 10 gets it a little bit better, but other than that, it is, it's a really stable gun platform. It hits where you want it, basically, provided you give, of course, a little bit of, uh, of aiming time. But this is a really good tank and a great credit printer, too. It really is. But there's a few issues with the tank. Um, that you should know about a thing. I mean, a Block 640 damage over here, and it is a really good heavy tank. It has a really strong turret. It has a really thick gun mantle with a bit of spaced armor. The front is uh, quite good, and you can side scrape with it. Make no mistake about that. It is a really good side scraper. But it is, in terms of mobility, not the most brilliant one. I've picked three games uh, of. Uh, over a few days, I think, actually. This one's, this one's from yesterday, and. When I started rolling forward, I was actually thinking, uh, let's, let's play some realistic mode and <laughs> grant some more credits. <laughs> and I kind of forgot that the realistic mode wasn't there, so that's why I just thundered forward, just into enemy territory, not knowing what to do. Big brain move here, shooting the T49, and I, I know he, he got a Dirk, and he has heat and AC, he can shoot me through the boxes, just let the boxes stay over there. And then he will shoot me and the boxes will absorb the shot. I'm gonna go forward here and knock these boxes down because I have an HG shell loaded as well up the ass of the T40, uh, T40, the M41 Bulldog, which is good, but uh, I didn't manage to save the SU152, which is a bit annoying. But I think I played this game fairly well. You can see once you get flanked with the tank, uh, if you have the crew skills, etc., then you will rate, rotate around quick enough. But it is not the most. Brilliant mobile heavy tank if you are on mid and soft terrain. If you know what you're doing, if you can pre-position, then quite well. If if you get caught off guard, then you might have a little bit of problems. But then again, that could be sad of, I don't know, all the tanks basically? All the tanks in the game requ require some care and thought into playing. And that's why I've picked these three games, and there will be no... Ace Forty Unicum gameplay style in, the, in these ones. It's just, I mean, it's me playing. I do my best. I know I have good stats, but uh, there's better, better games available maybe to watch on the level. But it's, I decided to give you this one anyway because it has a good gun. But the Lerb also has a really good credit coefficient at 185 percent, and it doesn't have a massive repair cost factor either. I mean the Carnarvon has a far higher one, uh, 4.17 for the lower, 5.5 for the Carnarvon. And the AMX M4 MLE 49, which is the French tier 8 premium heavy tank, that has quite a similar gun, a 100mm gun, 263 on uh, AP CR penetration, 232 on AP. The Lerbe gets 294 on AP CR and 234 on AP. Both of them have 3.10 damage, uh, just about 2k in terms of uh, DPM on AP, and here you can see that you can side grip with the tank, uh, but the guns are pretty much similar. The AMX gets 10 degrees of gun operation, the Lerber gets 8. The gun handling on the Lerber is a bit better upon movement and rotation and dispersion itself uh, too, but that's of course mitigated by that uh, uh, worse gun depression of 8 degrees, which is by no means shabby, but 10 degrees is a bit more flexible. The AMX is a bit quicker, that one is not such a good side scraper, but it has 250 on the front of the turret while the Lerbe gets 120, and it has 175 on the front of the hull while the, while the Lerbe gets uh, 150. So, 
it is a good side scraper. It is a really good tank. But above all, it, it's it is ba it's like the it's the, the Deutsche Bank basically. It's a credit printer. And what I've been doing, and you can see what I've been doing in terms of shooting tanks. You don't need a lot of APCR. At least if you're top tier. You have a good gun, 10.5 centimeters. That means that you get an HE round, which does 420 per shot at 60 penetration. And if you're going to use the uh, the rammer, then you're pump pumping it up to 2,826 dpm on the HE. Of course, you will not be able to shoot HE for a full minute, but it's like every 10 seconds uh, you get a round available. And if you're going to use the food, double of them. Um, your rate of fire will be seven rounds a minute. That's pretty nifty in my opinion And your base DPM will then be 2208 with a rammer and double food, but again using the double foods so that will of course lower your uh, Lower your uh, uh, credit income and this is of course a tier 8 premium tank And this is a game I had together with the bazaar 156 in who was in the uh, Knarf and action 10 as you can see and now this is the position at uh, Alpenstadt. And what I noticed is, is that this is actually a pretty good position. <laughs> I, didn't, I haven't been to town a lot on Alpenstadt and I can shoot this uh, T20 Defender. There we go, thank you very much. Good shot into him. I haven't been to this position uh, uh, too much, which explains why I missed that first shot on the tag. I was thinking he would drive on the street, but he was behind the other house as well. But you can see what you can do here. You can, can kind of control C cap. And I want to report missing shell here. Thank you. Uh, you can control C cap. You can go just a little bit more hold down, protected by the bridge, protected by the houses in front. And then I can shoot the lerbe. And this one was a, that was a poor shot. That was a poor shot. That one dropped right into the front of the lerbe. But that also shows the, the, the armor profile, basically. Because the turret is quite strong. but that's provided you're facing forward, then you have this armor profile. Once you start turning your turret around, the sides are easily penetrated by most of the tanks you will be facing at the tiers. And on the left and the right side of the uh, mantle, the, the gun cheeks there are easily penetrated as well. So you can go hold down with the tank, but you, you should never really sit still. The cupola on top is an obvious weak spot as well, albeit a, a, a little one. But you have to take that into account and then you're gonna see a few more shots uh, shot at me by the enemy where they easily penetrate the front of my tank and I'm not even showing the complete size even though this is one where I do show the side that was the Panther 2 going through the side um, and I have to start making a bit of pressure here I have to start punishing the enemy for making mistakes so I am doing that on the pattern there we go that's one tank down and here I want to shoot that uh, T20 Defender you can see that I think the the Panther actually penetrated me just on the side of the turret and I wasn't even... I hadn't even turned my turret completely towards him and through the front, if they have a good gun, they can penetrate you. That That's just easy peasy lemon squeezy. That said, you can penetrate other tanks as well and I haven't used any APCR on yet. I wanted to use one on the front of the T28 Defender just because that was a kill shot and needed to make that one. Um, but I didn't have to use an APC armor, which is good. Right, setting up a little bit of a trap now uh, to go against the E75, and I'm working with the gun oppression. And you can see this is what the 10 degrees versus 8 degrees mean. 10 degrees would have been able to, I would have been able to get that shot on the E75 and penetrate him in the side. But with 8, that was uh, wasn't a possibility, and I was wasn't sure yet what gun that tank was using. But judging from the amount of hit points flying off the target too. That confirms to me he has the big gun and that means I don't want to get shot by him. So here the Tiger 2 is going down and I had noticed the Reds were over 800 in terms of uh, hit points. So that's why I'm putting my tank in front of the uh, E75. I wanted to take the shot, there we go. And it's not because I wanted to get damaged, I wanted to help my teammate. And I was fearing that the E75 would shoot the Tiger 2 and then the Reds would hop over 1000 in terms of uh, in terms of victory points which would have secured the win for them but upon watching the replay that wasn't necessary but that was in the heat of the battle I take a look at the credits it's just 
a very simple basic game. It's not even monster damage, and you're just racking up the credits basically. I think it's that's why you should play the lurk. You should play it to get the credits in, and also because it's of course a good tank. But th this is the credit grinder of choice in tier 8 currently for me. Last in the game then is on uh, Canal. Now we're gonna go forward, we're going towards base B, we're going to capture it. And as I'm driving forward, I'm already looking at the minimap. What is my team uh, doing? We're gonna go into the bush, not side scrape of that uh, of that house then move back a little bit so I'm protected. There's the Black Prince who's capturing the base together with me. Thank you very much. That is not really nice of you. If we are then spotted, you can take the hit. No worries. Right, we're gonna move back, move back, move back and then forward because Reds are on C. We want to see what is happening. Can we spot somebody over there? Yes, we can, I think. No, it was a blind shot. Just trying. Did I manage to hit him? Which is a bit unfortunate. Or a side scrape of these big pipes uh, in front of me. Nearly reloaded. There's nobody shooting back, so we have to go forward just for a little bit. Oh, hello. Oh, hello, bossy. Can we shoot you? Oh, yes, we can. Thank you very much. That's a good shot in. Gonna make a bit of pressure again, just going forward because the Black Prince is going towards A. We have a few campers. We are capturing a D cap as well. And I also spotted earlier there were no heavies crossing towards A cap. And I can see on the minimap that their heavies are indeed uh, going across. I'm still worried about the Borsig, so I'm going to stay here, not push, I am behind those little sheds, there he is, through the shed, and only now, bling, am I spotted. So that meant that by just staying behind that little shed, I remained unspotted. <laughs> Big brain move again. Right, uh, T28, HTC Independence over there, not gonna go forward, 8015 is together with me, Black Prince is on A, we are losing tanks, it is. As you can see, four versus seven at the moment, which is by no means a good situation. But, ooh, there's a big full health VK 4501A, but we've got an 8015 here. There, hello, Mr. Ashu152. Here's some combined DPM, and I'm using the 8015 <laughs> for cover. Um, I have, have no hesitation in doing that. Really don't. Because the Black Prince is already moving on as well. And that means we have to go now because it's three versus five. Can we shoot somebody over there? No, we can't. Oh, they're moving in. They're moving in. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Keep pushing. Keep pushing. Keep going. Where is the VK4502A? We have to clear that tank. Do not worry about tanks chasing me. They're going to shoot me anyway. Yes, here we go. We can shoot him once. Turn around. Switch on the HE quickly because there's a T49 coming in. And I know I can penetrate the front of the tank. So HE. Boom. In the front, there we go, side scrape. Where's the bloody Borsig? There was a bloody Borsig over here. Where's the bloody Borsig? Can we shoot the bloody Borsig? Yes, we can. And another HE round, there we go. Cleared the Borsig, lovely stuff. And I make a bit of a bit of a mistake here. I should have switched back to AP and then shoot the uh, T49, but I didn't do that. There's the red lurver. We're gonna keep him in place now because the T49 is down and the lurver is getting shot from the back as well by the 8015. This is the armor profile of the turret. As you can see, cheeks easily penetrated and kaboom! There goes the lurver up in the sky. And we're going to try to reset B cap as well, but that shot didn't hit. That is a bit of fortune. Let's go forward, let's go forward. Activate the magic community contributor. Epic RNG hex shooting guided shell system. Here we go. Aim. One, two, three. Russia. <laughs> I knew it. I, I knew I could hit him. I know there's a little bit of a girl there and a little bit of a gap where you can shoot him, but it was <laughs> just click, snap. <laughs> Lovely stuff. But look at the credits, guys. I mean, 3.4k damage, not a brilliant game in terms of damage. A little bit of assistance on a few of the tanks, but the credits, mwah, nice. And that's it for today. Please hop into 7.0 as well. Looking forward to the British light tanks. Catch you all tomorrow. Cheers. Happy tanking.